Hi, I'm Scott from Six Points Woodworks, and we're using the tools in this building to build a 41-foot trawler yacht in this building in the backyard of our upstate New York home. Now, she was designed with the home builder in mind, and once complete, she'll be able to cross oceans and take two people comfortably anywhere in the world that they want to go. This is the Sea Dreamer Project. We had a beautiful fall and those warm temperatures allowed us to complete the epoxy laminations that make up our chine. That's fully installed now, it'll need a lot of shaping later, but the fact that it's in position means it will definitely be planking this winter. We also finished up our work on our diesel tank panels. They are all complete now, including the baffles. We didn't have that warm summer sun to complete the post-cure heating process that's required of this special resin-rich epoxy mixture we're using for the diesel tanks, so we needed to use artificial means to get that temperature above 120 degrees. Just like our diesel tanks, our water tanks will require baffles to combat the free surface effect. Of course, they can't just be solid panels. They need to have passages that allow both water and air to pass through. So we'll notch out half circles on both the bottom and the top that will allow the water to move freely to get to its discharge point. And just like everything else in this coating process, attention to detail is important. So like any coating, whether it be paint, epoxy, or stain, they don't like sharp corners. So we take the time to have nice gentle curves. We'll round over the edges with a router. Then we'll come back and sand with 80 grit sandpaper and we'll apply the same four to five coats of epoxy and fiberglass tape to seal the edges from water intrusion.
Sizing the side panels for the water tanks is a simple affair. Just some careful measurements, then we'll rip to width, cut to length, then we'll run through a dry fit of the entire assembly, including the use of the clamps that I want to have in place, just to make sure that there's no surprises. When it comes time for final assembly, we'll coat all the mating surfaces with epoxy and then we'll use the clamps to hold things in position while we install some 316 stainless steel staples. I like having mechanical fasteners to go along with the epoxy to make sure things stay nice and tight. Even though our mighty YouTube empire is capable of paying both our electric bill and cell phone bills sometimes in the same month, we're still obligated to take on some side jobs to help make ends meet for the build. And one just came from my neighbor who is a contractor. Now like most skilled trades, he has more work than he can handle, so he subbed out something fairly simple to me and I thought I would share it because while it may look complicated on its face, it's a fairly simple, high impact, low skilled job that the introductory woodworker or DIY guy can handle pretty much no problem. And that is, we're going to be making some solid wood uh, drawer fronts and some pan, or excuse me, some doors for some cabinetry and a laundry room. And we're going to be making uh, rail and style doors with a panel in the middle. And then the solid wood drawer fronts are just going to be a glue up and then we'll round over uh, the edges. And the heart of this system is going to be using a router, a table saw, and a router table. And, you know, just as a side note, with those three tools, you can do a ton of woodworking. So if you're looking to get into the hobby with those three things, you can do a lot of the things that a lot of these specialized machines in my shop do on their own and you know it takes a little bit more setup time and may take you a little bit longer to get things done but if you're looking to get into the hobby that's a very cost-effective way to do it so with this we're going to be using our Porter Cable 690 and I've had this router for like 20 years it's a horse and a half uh, they've been in production for like 40 years virtually unchanged and that's because they do what they do really well and pretty cheaply and they don't have the modern features like some of the new routers with, you know, above the table height adjustments or single wrench to get the, the router bits out. But it does what it needs to do and it does it well. So we'll be using this mounted in our router table and then we'll need a specialized bit. And this is a door making bit. It's a stacked uh, router bit, meaning that it can do two operations on one bit. So what will happen is that we'll take our, our rails and we will route the edge and this bottom cutter here will put a profile, a pretty profile, on the front of the door and then this center cutter will cut out the groove for the plywood panel. Then we'll take our styles, we'll lower the bit and this will clear away the waste material from the underside and then this will cope the end of the style so that it fits in the rail. It'll look really nice, it's a very strong glue joint, there'll be no mechanical fasteners and it's pretty simple to do. So if you're thinking about maybe taking on something in your house for your kitchen, your bathroom, your laundry room, this is something to think about that you could take on yourself. And Particularly for this job, it's a paint grade job, meaning 
we have a little bit of a fudge factor. If you make a mistake or things don't go perfectly, just like in welding with a little grinding, you know, we just add our wood filler, some caulk, and some paint. She'll look perfect and it'll function just the same. So don't be afraid to take on a project like this. Now the first step is going to be dimensioning up our stock. My neighbor was good enough to actually bring the product already over here, the plywood, the solid wood. I don't even have to go out to get it, so that makes it easy for me. Uh, the only downside is, is he got it at the big one of the big box stores, and we'll be using Poplar, which takes paint great, machines easily. It's a great wood to work with, but when you buy your lumber already surfaced on all four sides, and you'll see that designated in the lumber S4S, surfaced four sides, uh, it's tough to find really straight, flat lumber at the big box stores. you really got to pick your way through it. And I like buying my lumber in the rough because I can make it square, and I know it's square on the day that I'm going to work with it because wood does move. And it allows me, if I make a mistake, I can go back and remachine it. But since this has already been surfaced, it's at its final thickness. We can't make any mistakes on the thicknesses of it and the edges because then we would have to buy more product. So that's the only downside, but it's still perfectly doable. And we'll get started on the process, and you can check it out and see if it's something that you think you could take on. Regardless, if you're going to machine your own stock to its final dimensions or you purchase your lumber already surfaced, it's always going to make our life easier if we have nice, flat, straight, square edges on our stock. So while we're roughing out our pieces for all the different components of the drawer fronts and the doors, we cut them oversize and then we take the time to run one edge over the joiner. That'll give us a nice, smooth, square edge and we'll put that edge up against the fence on our table saw and rip a parallel edge. When it comes glue up time, having those two perfectly smooth parallel edges will make our drawer front glue ups look seamless and it'll allow our stock to ride tightly up against the fence on our router table when we're doing this cope and stick method. With the edge detail cut on all our pieces, now we can cut everything to length. The rail pieces will stay at this final dimension, but our styles will go back to the router table. We'll make an adjustment to our stacked router bit and then run them for the cope cut. The bit we purchased came with a template block to ease the setup process. Once you line the cutter heads with the block, you're ready to cut. And it's important that you use a backer block when you're doing this end grain cutting because you tend to have tear out with these bits. So having a backer block prevents that and makes for a nice clean joint.
The panels for these doors are just simple quarter inch plywood and when we cut them to size we cut them slightly undersized like a 32nd undersized and that's just to make sure they don't interfere with the rail and style fully mating with each other so we have a nice tight fit. We'll dry fit all the doors and then check the diagonal measurements to make sure they're equal. When those diagonal measurements are equal we know each door is square and then we can go ahead with our glue up. When doing a glue up like we're doing for these drawer fronts, it's important that you take the time to make sure the faces are flush. And that may just involve adding or taking away more tension on the clamps and using a mallet to pound things down to get them just so they're nice and flush and then you can add your final clamp pressure. Not too much pressure, we don't want to squeeze all the glue out of the joint. And then before the glue sets up, it's always a good idea to either wipe away the glue with a rag or a sponge, or in this case we're using a squeegee to kind of scrape it away. After a light sanding to remove any remaining squeeze out, it's back to the table saw to cut things to their final width and length. And then we're gonna add our edge detail, which in this case is just a simple round over. With a piece that's going to have an edge detail on all four sides, I like to start with the end grain first. That's where you're most likely to have tear out. And by starting with the end grain and then turning it counterclockwise for the edge cut, that edge cut will remove any of the tear out that may have occurred on the end grain. 
and then you just continue around in the counterclockwise fashion until all the sides are cut. We put that same edge detail on the door fronts to match and then a final sanding and it's ready for paint. And you can see our glue up looks seamless except for the color difference and grain variation. Once it's painted you'll never know that it was a glue up. The joints on our doors fit really well and once they're painted you'll never know that there was a seam there as well. So if you've been considering a project similar to this at your house, before you run out and hire somebody or go over to the big box store looking for something pre-made, I think this is worthy of considering as something that you could do yourself. You'll get a fully custom job just the way you want it and you'll have the benefit of knowing you did it yourself. So something to think about. Back out in the boat shed, work continues on the chine in preparation for the side planking. And if you remember when we built our frames, we beveled those edges on the table saw when it was an easy cut. And now that's really paying off because there's not much work to get those sides ready for planking. However, the underside is a different story. There's going to be significant work to shape that into position to accept the bottom planking. In our next episode, we'll get into how we actually laid out the marks for that chine, how we're going to cut it, and other work on our tanks and transom as we get ready to plank this winter. So remember, your job is what it always is. Like, subscribe, and share. We'll see you next time.